President and CEO of HP Servicing. So we are a crowdfunded, socially responsible company. So we do a series of offerings in a reggae offering. So people will invest into our offering. We pay them a 10% return. And then we use the proceeds of those investments to purchase past due residential loans. And we then work with the homeowner to reposition their debt and keep them in their home. So uh, I joined HP Servicing just about a year ago and took over from the founder of the company who was very entrepreneurial. And so when I first joined, there were about 14 employees, um, no policies and procedures and very little technology. So the biggest challenge that first year was really putting a team and an infrastructure in place to scale the business for the future. So we have a very collaborative culture um, and there's a lot of, I would say, formal and informal um, collaboration that takes place, you know, especially as we've looked at technology and new initiatives and other things. Um, one of the things that somebody said to me that uh, I loved was that they came in to visit for a day and it felt like a think tank. So we've got an open floor plan, we're in a trading office, and I think those things have really contributed to um, folks working together. I think the other thing that's really brought people together in a way that's very um, special in this company is that uh, belief in the social mission. So we are the only socially responsible trading company that I'm aware of in the country in our space. Uh, last year we started our own servicing business and we are also the only socially responsible servicer um, in the country. In addition to that, we're the only crowdfunded um, companies in either space. So we have a very unique niche in the market for those two reasons alone. And I think the other thing that really sets us apart is innovation. So um, most of our competitors are very labor intensive and they have technology platforms that are 10 or 20 years old. We invested heavily in technology and um, that has really, we've already seen the results of that where we can really scale the organization without the need to add um, a lot of additional people and that's become a competitive advantage to us very quickly. One of the things that's been very gratifying uh, is that once I moved to this company I started getting phone calls from people that I've worked with in the past saying you know I looked you up online or I saw the press release and I want to come work with you again and especially in this um, environment of low unemployment it's become a huge advantage to us so we're holding um, a couple of meet and greets every week with people who are coming to us um, asking to look at opportunities and keep me in mind when a position opens and that for us has really been tremendous. We have not needed to use recruiters um, and we've really been able to find folks that we think are a good cultural fit for us today and for the future as we scale. I would say always be recruiting and the other thing that I've done in my career is always be thinking about paying it forward. Right? So if you're a manager that your employees can count on and if you genuinely care about their career development, they feel that difference and they're going to want to grow with you as you grow and that means that you're really not recruiting. What you're really doing is bringing people along with you when you've got the right opportunity and you'll know who those people are. Hi, I'm Ralph Blust. I'm the president of Insurion Solutions. Insurion is a online portal that allows small businesses to purchase and manage their own property and casualty insurance. So the biggest transformation that's going on in the insurance industry today is the digitization of it. Insurance industry was a very, very paper-driven, process-driven uh, industry, very expensive. Now what it has evolved into is how can you create a great user experience online to allow a consumer to easily purchase a product. Additionally, you also want to customize that product to their specific needs. To do that on a real-time basis, creating a great user experience is, is the biggest evolution that's going through in insurance today. The biggest challenges we saw when we first started was that we were convincing carriers of this concept, going to an online portfolio. And, and having an online portfolio of products, trying to create this, this solution that would allow us to be able to distribute to an online consumer. 
Once that began, and once we started getting the largest insurance companies to support the, this concept of distribution, many more have now joined. And so as we sit here today, if you look at our company back in 2013, we were a $75 million company with a few thousand clients. Today, we have over $2 billion of business running through our platform, hundreds of thousands of clients throughout the entire country. But the way in which we innovate was at first it was how could we create an easy application process. If you have ever bought insurance, you know that there's enormous amounts of questions. You as a consumer are wondering why they're asking you the color of your house. What difference does that make from a, from a standpoint of the type of insurance that you're going to buy? What we began to do is we began to identify what is important in the insurance underwriting process and how can we get that data by not asking the consumer themselves, but finding it through third parties. Then what we began to do was from the application process, we began how do you administer the policy throughout the policy year. If you need an endorsement, if you need to make any type of change, if you need to provide a certificate for anyone, you're able to do that on, an, on a self-serve basis. You know, the, the, the world is going to a 24-7 economy and providing clients that capability through insurance is how we have tried to innovate and, and drive the, um, the, the overall experience. Along the way, there's been many challenges that we've had, and some of those challenges have been internal, where we've had to make difficult decisions. Some of them have been external, where decisions have been put upon us through the industry or just trying to, to change the mindset of, of, of a partner. And the best way to do that is to break it down as a team's problem. You're working with your client, you're working with your insured, you're working with a carrier, and you turn it into a mutual problem that you're trying to improve the overall outcome, trying to benefit for all parties. Then you begin to collaborate together to that solution. To me, the most effective type of team building, the most effective type of company, and the most effective growth is when you're building a team, a team of like-minded people looking to accomplish the same goal. Okay, there's a lot of paths to get there, but if you're all trying to get there the same way and pull the rope the same way, you end up with the best outcome. So the best business advice that I've ever received, um, you know, there's been so many mentors, there's been so many people that have helped me along the way. It's so hard to isolate one. But if there's one, one thing that I think that has, has been the guiding light to my career, it has been mostly treat the client like you wanna be treated, treat a business partner, treat an associate, just treat everyone as you want it to be. Put yourself in their shoes before you begin to, to attack a problem. And so if, if, I, if I was to look at anything that I received early on is you're on a journey and to do it with people and to do it from their perspective is the most effective.